Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Son, I, I, you know, you've, you've made the, uh, or brought up the issue of intelligence uh, throughout uh, your testimony and, and the gaps that were there and, and how we need to, to strengthen uh, the intelligence. But I, w I was struck uh, by the fact that you said the FBI report, and my understanding is that that report had some fairly specific information that was troubling. Uh, that you said that that report did get sent to the Capitol Police, that it went to the folks uh, in the Intelligence Department, uh, but then you were not aware of it, which raises a really big question. It's something coming in like that right before an event that I think is significant. It does not get to operational commanders who are there to deal with it. How, did that, how, how can that happen? How could you not get that vital intelligence on the eve of what's going to be in a major event? What? Thank you, sir. I know that's something that's going to be looked at. Uh, I think that information would have been helpful to be aware of. Again, you know, looking at the information for the first time yesterday, it is strictly raw data. It's raw intelligence information that has come in, seen on a social media post. Uh, lots of people post things on social media that need to be, you know, corroborated and uh, confirmed. Uh, so it, again, it's come, coming in as raw data. So please keep that in, in, in mind. But you know, I, I agree. That's something we need to look at. What's the process and how do we streamline that information getting to where it needs to go? Well, I understand it's raw data, but it's the eve of the event. You're not going to have time to, to do the kind of analysis that you would normally like to do. Uh, that is information that has to get to you. So that's clearly a major problem. And my question uh, is also related to the uh, uh, report that was put out by Capitol Police, by your, your uh, intelligence folks on January 3rd. The Intelligence Division of the Capitol Police issued an re internal report which reportedly stated, uh, and this is, uh, some of this has been out in, in the public domain, uh, that uh, instead of targeting counter-protesters, protesters, as you've seen in the prior events that occurred that you've referenced uh, earlier, uh, that, quote, this is, quote, that has been out in the public domain, that Congress itself is the target on the 6th by Trump supporters. Congress was the target. The report also mentioned that members of the Proud Boys, white supremacist groups, other extremist groups would be in attendance and, quote, again, out in public sources, may be inclined to become violent. So you, you have your own report. Did you see that report that was put out on the 3rd? Yes, I did. So how is not that a warning of some extraordinary measures? Now, I understand you increased and you had folks uh, there and you increased your presence. But how was not that not a real big warning flag? And if it was, what exactly did you do when you read that report? So that was uh, one of the reports that contributed to the fact that we expanded our perimeter. Uh, I reached out, uh, you know, looking at it, I'd reach out to the Metropolitan uh, Police Department, just knowing, even before that report, knowing, you know, what that um, extremists were likely to be there uh, in the previous reports for it that has been called for on social media for people to be armed. In talking with our uh, partners over at the Metropolitan Police Department, I reached out to say, hey, are we, are you going to be able to provide us some support? And we coordinated that additional support the morning of the, uh, of the 6th. So yeah, we did take all that in consideration as we developed uh, the extensive security plans for this event. So you changed plans on January 3rd after getting that report? We, yeah, we adjust, adjust our perimeter. We did a number of things. Uh, for we actually were adjusting our perimeter probably you know, a little bit before that as well. So that was happening before. So we're going to want to know more specifically when you get that. And then, of course, we're, I think we're going to see you got additional information from the FBI, for example, but that did not get to you. So right. I, I, I understand that. Yeah. The other thing that I think is important for us to understand, and I've heard all of you mention this uh, in your in your testimony, that this was not just a, uh, a, a this is actually in response to uh, Chair Chairwoman's uh, Klobuchar's question, it is not just a random violent attack, it was actually coordinated that you saw, and I believe in your testimony as well, I'm going to ask other witnesses to respond to this too, because all of you mentioned that. How do you define coordinated? What did we actually see from these folks that leads you to believe that it was coordinated? And I think in your testimony now, you just mentioned military style coordination. So that would mean command and control. It would mean understanding the layout of the Capitol. It may mean knowing uh, uh, the internal operations of, uh, of defense perimeters, of uh, folks that are engaged. Talk to me, what did you see that leads you to believe that this was a coordinated attack? And I would like our other witnesses to, to uh, engage in that as well. Yeah, I'm able to provide you a quick overview of why I think it was a coordinated attack. One. These people came specifically with equipment. You're bringing climbing gear. 
to, to a demonstration. You're bringing explosives. You're bringing chemical spray, such as what Captain Mendoza, Mendoza had talked about. You're coming at, prepare, uh, prepared. The fact that the group that attacked our West Front, attacked our West Front 20 minutes, approximately 20 minutes before the event over at the Ellipse ended, which means they were planning on our agency not being at what they call full strength, be, you know, watching the other events saying, hey, that event's ending. Okay, everybody get on post. They're gonna be marching our way knowing that we may not be at full strength at that time. And then also the fact that we were dealing with two pipe bombs that were specifically you know, set right off the edge of our uh, uh, perimeter to, what I suspect, draw resources away. I think there was a significant uh, coordination with this attack. Anyone else? Have, uh, my uh, uh, Chief Conte, I think you also yeah. believed it was a coordinated attack? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my view is from uh, the day of the incident, uh, I think there were hand signals that were being used by several of the insurrectionists. Uh, there, were radio, there was radio communication uh, by several individuals that were involved. Uh, the coordinated use of, of uh, uh, chemical munitions to include uh, bear spray uh, by several uh, people that were out there. I certainly believe it was coordinated uh, to Chief Sun's point regarding the uh, placement of the pipe bombs uh, in the areas, their discovery uh, prior to this event, all of those things. And plus, uh, adding to that what we know in hindsight now uh, as a result of the ongoing investigation that's being handled uh, by the FBI, uh, you know, as they continue to scrub uh, social media, I think we're learning more and more and more that this is clearly a coordinated effort. Real quick, uh, Mr. Irving, and then I'll, I'll ask another question real quick, Mr. Irving. Based on the information provided by Chief Conti and Chief Sund, I would agree the evidence would indicate a coordinated attack. So we're looking at uh, folks that were coming out in, in uh, intelligence reports, that uh, groups like the Oath Keepers, Proud Boys, others that were engaged, uh, uh, these violent extremist groups, which we clearly need to get collect more intelligence on. It'll be the subject of another hearing that we will uh, do regarding uh, this. But if you look at what uh, the DOG is now prosecuting, 200 federal cases, uh, the FBI has linked at least 40 to extremist groups, 59 to other defendants that have connections on social media to violent or extremist rhetoric, conspiracy theories. Uh, uh, this is clearly an area that we've got to focus on as to why did we not have more information about these groups that were coming here planning, and usually you leave a trail when you're planning, either that or you're real sophisticated using encrypted devices and other things, but those are things that we're gonna to have to be looking at. Clearly the National Guard presence was critical. I know you're gonna get a lot of questions related to that, but Chief Conte, in my remaining time, just a question, yeah, and you mentioned this in your testimony, but in an earlier statement, Chief, you stated that you were stunned by, the, by, by quote, the tepid response of the Army officials in response to Chief Sun's request for assistance while the violent siege was, was uh, escalating. Clearly, here we got a coordinated attack. All of you saw this immediately the way they were doing. I can imagine the conversations with the National Guard. And Chief, you were stunned by the tepid response. Could you clarify that and tell us exactly how those conversations went? Yeah, so uh, just after, sometime after 2 o'clock uh, p.m., I had left the, uh, the west front of the Capitol after initially uh, being at the scene, assessing uh, what was going on, uh, looking at uh, just how violent uh, uh, at looking at the violent actions that were taking place. Uh, shortly thereafter, there was a phone call that was convened uh, between several officials. Uh, Chief Sun was on the call, uh, literally pleading uh, for, there were several army officials that were on the call. I don't know all by name who were on the call. Uh, several officials from district government that were on the scene. But Chief Sun was pleading uh, for the deployment of the National Guard. And in response to that, uh, there was not an immediate yes uh, the National Guard is responding. Yes, the National Guard is on the way. Yes, the National Guard are being restaged from traffic posts uh, to respond. Uh, the response was more uh, asking about the plan uh, that, you know, what was the plan for the National Guard? The response was more uh, focused on, uh, in addition to the plan, uh, the optics, you know, the, how this looks uh, with boots on the ground uh, on the on the Capitol. And in, in my response to that uh, was simply, I was just stunned uh, that, you know, I have officers that were out there literally fighting for their lives. And, you know, we're, we're kind of going through, you know, what seemed like a, an exercise to really check the boxes 
uh, and there was not an immediate response. Uh, with the, 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 when I asked specifically, uh, Steve Sun, Chief Sun, was he requesting the resp uh, National Guard, and was that request being denied? The response was no. Uh, we're not the, the, from the uh, U.S. Department of the Army. Was no. We're not uh, denying the request. Uh, but uh, the net, they were concerned. They did have concerns. So I was just, again, just stunned at that response. Thank you. Thank you.